Hey internet, if you missed the update video that I posted yesterday, it's really quick and really short, so make sure to go and check that out. That's gonna give you a little indication of what's gonna be going on over the next couple months, and I wanna see your guys' thoughts on it. So today I'm posting a video because it is the 12 year anniversary of my father's death, and like, you know, immediately the energy goes down. So I'm gonna be real honest with you guys. This is not gonna be a happy video. It's gonna be a really hard video to film. I'm gonna start off talking a little bit about the disease my dad had because a lot of you probably don't know about it. I've done several videos about my dad, which I'll probably link all around. But one of the things that I haven't done is talk about what that last day was like. So what was February 8th, 2005 like for me? Fair warning. This is gonna get sad, but it's a thing that I want to talk about and this is like completely a video for me. So if you are interested in knowing what that was like, feel free to stick around, but I totally don't blame you if you don't want to know because it's it sucks. It sucks a lot. <laughs> Okay, so what did my dad have? My dad had polycythemia vera, or it's also known as PV. The deal is that there is a mutation in the uh, cells that create your blood and your bone marrow, and they overproduce red blood cells. So what ends up happening is that you get this really, really thick blood. In a sense, it's kind of like the red blood cell equivalent to leukemia. If you don't know what leukemia is, that's an overproduction of white blood cells. Initially, you might think, why is that a big deal? Why is it a problem that you have a lot of blood cells? You just got a lot of blood. The problem is that it, because it makes your blood really thick, it's really hard on all of your organs. For a while, my dad had to go into the hospital like once a week and get like a pint of blood taken out and replaced with salt water or saline solution. My dad had this disease for 20 years, so he was diagnosed before I was even born. It starts out with kind of very mild symptoms or maybe not any at all and you don't realize that you have it. And then as time progresses, things get worse, your organs kind of get worn down. My dad was taking a lot of medication and so a lot of those had complications. He had something called gout, which was caused by the steroids that he was taking. They would cause his joints to swell up and I remember so many times like sitting there in the evenings and giving him like foot massages or hand massages. It was horrible, you know, he just had so much pain and they were, they were so swollen. He got splenomegaly which meant that his spleen was super huge. I did a presentation in fourth grade on his uh, disease and I brought in a professional size American football. That was the size that his spleen was and his spleen was only supposed to be the size of your fist. It was really, really hard on a lot of his organs. By the end of his life, his kidneys were around 10% functioning and so what he had to do is he had to go in every other day and basically have all of his blood pumped out of his body, cleaned and pumped back in. It's a process called dialysis. He had to do that because his kidneys were unable to filter his blood. Ultimately, however, the cause of his death was that he got a stroke. One of the things that is a big thing with polycythemia vera patients is that your blood is so thick, it's very easy for it to clot. He got a clot in the blood vessels in his brain and it caused him to die. One of the things I did mention earlier is a mutation, and a lot of times, if you know very much about biology at all, a mutation is something that can be passed down, it's genetic. The really weird thing about this mutation, and they didn't discover this mutation until within the year that my father died, I believe. It is a mutation that occurs post-conception, so it's not something that is a mutation in your sex cells, it's a mutation that occurs later, and so it's not something that you can pass down. I don't have to worry about having it because I got it from him. That was like one of the first things you think about. Like, what, what if I get it too? More and more, there is more research being done on PV. It's super rare. So you don't hear about it a lot and obviously there's not going to be like a lot of money going towards that research. The leading hospital doing research on PV is, is right here in Maryland at Johns Hopkins and so my dad was able to see the kind of like leading physicians in the field but at that point, you know, there was nothing that could be done except for treating the symptoms. So that's the illness itself. But kind of what I really wanted to talk about today was the experience of the last like 24 hours of my dad's life. I kind of just wanted to put it out there so I had a record of what the day was like. Because the memory is an imperfect thing, it's very possible that I could be remembering things incorrectly. If you're a family member who is watching and I'm saying things wrong, feel free to tell me. I was 13 at the time that this was happening, so I was also a child and didn't fully understand a lot of things, so might be some errors, but I'm gonna tell you my perspective. So I wanna start with the night before, which I believe was a Monday night. I went to bed and I told my dad, 
I love you and I will see you tomorrow. <sighs> the reason that hits me so hard is that's the last thing that I know that he heard me say to him. That's the last time I know that he was coherent and I remember that being a particularly good day. My dad was very sick and so some days were very bad and when you are feeling bad and have a lot of chronic pain, it doesn't exactly put you in the best moods. The day before he died, he just happened to have a really good day and so I, you know, responded in kind and, you know, said goodnight to him, told him I loved him, and went to bed. The next morning on Tuesday, when I woke up and went to school, he was already gone because he went, I mean, it was early, it was like six in the morning that he went to wherever it was that he got dialysis. So I went to school, I was in eighth grade, and my dad was at dialysis, and while he was there, he started having some issues. I can't exactly remember what was going on, but I think that's when the stroke started and he was clearly uh, struggling, so they had to call the ambulance and take him to the hospital. Meanwhile, I'm in school, have no idea anything is going on. When he was in the hospital, they were trying to ask him information and instead of giving my mom's name, he evidently gave my name and he was very confused, kind of was going downhill really quickly. He had a lot of different blood tests done. They found out that his potassium was I think too high. In order to combat that, they give you like this weird charcoal stuff. So they gave it to my dad. I should have done this earlier. It might get a little bit graphic, so fair warning if you don't want to know about death and like the kind of gross stuff that has to come with death. Maybe stop listening. They give my dad this potassium stuff. It's like an oral thing. They have him swallow it at this point, like he was so out of it. And then they left the room and my dad threw up and ended up breathing it back in and it burned holes in his lungs and uh, he went into a coma. So at that point on, he was no longer aware of anything that was going. He never woke back up again. About this time, I get called down to the principal's office at school and it is my oldest brother there. I remember seeing my brother in the office and knowing something was wrong because my brother never comes and picks me up. I don't know, I feel like I could just tell and he said, you know, Pop is in the hospital and we're gonna go see him. My dad had been in and out of the hospital a lot and so it wasn't like a weird thing that he was in the hospital but like I don't know you could just tell you knew that that was it was really bad if they were coming to get me out of the school you knew it was gonna be bad so my oldest brother picked myself and my little brother up from middle school and we drove to Baltimore. The small hospital that was nearby was not sufficient. And so the rest of the day and the evening kind of is a blur to me. I don't really feel like I remember a whole lot of it. A whole lot of it was spent just kind of like sitting in this waiting area, kind of hoping that things would get better. And my mom was in the room with my dad and he kept going into cardiac arrest and they kept having to revive him. It was just really bad. And so finally, around 11 o'clock at night, they told us that they didn't think that the next time he went into cardiac arrest that they would be able to revive him. They told us that the damage that the stroke had done to his brain was he was not going to be able to come back from that. Even if he was going to come back, he was going to have brain damage. Basically, we were told that we needed to go in and say our goodbyes and they were going to turn everything off. So we went into the hospital room. And we all stood around and one of the things that I always did with my dad was I always rubbed his head. Um, <laughs> it seems like such a silly thing. He was very bald. <laughs> when he wasn't feeling good, I wanted to do anything I could to make him feel better. And so when we went in to say goodbye to him, I just stood there and I rubbed his head. And we waited to, you know, hear everything turn off and waited for him to die. I will always be grateful that my whole family was able to be there. I've heard stories recently about families not being able to be there and that just sounds horrible. This was not the first time I had been in the room when someone had died. My grandfather had died a couple years before. That was at home and this was a hospital. It was a completely different experience and I remember just kind of not being able to process it as a 13 year old. It was too much and too much had happened so quickly. I do remember that in a sense that I was relieved. I felt like he had been suffering for so long and I was so glad to know that he was not gonna be suffering anymore even if it meant that we weren't gonna have him. So that was the night, that was the night that my dad died and it was weird and a lot and I didn't really know how to handle it. <laughs>
<laughs> basically. I went back to that hospital for the first time since he died uh, on a field trip with my kids a couple weeks ago and it was weird. It was so weird to walk into there and realize, like I looked up and I could see the area where we sat while we were waiting to hear news and it was... <laughs> because I was young, I feel like I processed it in small bits and so I didn't cry a whole lot when we were at the hospital but then like later on weird things would hit me and I would realize like my dad was dead and I was gonna miss these things and um, you know little things would remind me and so I would like slowly over time deal with it and you know if you've ever experienced a loss it's one of those things that like it gets easier to deal with but it doesn't go away and so 12 years later <laughs> Here I am sitting here talking to a camera still crying about it. I mean nobody's perfect and it's easy to kind of put the people that you loved on a pedestal especially if they are gone now and I think a lot of me growing up and learning about my dad has been learning about the fact that he was a person. That doesn't change the fact that I loved him a lot and I miss him and while there were so many kind of really hard things to deal with when he was alive and you know, it was hard to watch him go through this illness. There was a lot of really good stuff too. And normally when I think of him, I don't think of his anger and his pain. I think about his laughter and his singing and uh, just like how goofy he was. That's my story. If you stuck around for it, thanks. But I don't blame anyone that didn't. I just am glad to finally tell it. But okay, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later.